So to test your understanding of what we've been discussing on the past few slides, I'm going to show you a handful of different atoms and ask you a series of questions. And again, you can pause the video and try to answer those questions before I answer them um, and discuss the, the answers. So let's talk about this atom over here. First question is, what uh, type of atom is it? You can pause and uh, think about that or look up the answer. And by uh, our cartoon version of what a proton is, this atom has one proton. So if you look up which atom has one proton in the periodic table, it's hydrogen. Um, and it's a hydrogen atom, in this case, with a single electron. So in this case, the way that we have drawn this atom, this hydrogen atom is electrically neutral. In other words, this electron, the charge of this electron neutralizes the charge of this proton. So it has the total charge of that atom is zero. Next question, how many valence electrons does it have? You can pause for a second here. Um, and the answer is that it has one valence electron. So the valence electrons are just the electrons in the outermost shell of the atom. This atom only has one electron in, in its entirety, um, so it only has one valence electron. Next question, is the valence shell filled? So again, you can pause if you'd like. And the answer to this is the answer to this question here is no, because the first shell can hold a maximum of two electrons, and this atom only has one electron. So this second slot is still empty. So the valence shell is not filled. Um, and based on the rules that we had discussed in the previous slide, these types of atoms that do not have their outermost shell filled, um, they prefer not to be in that state. So you can think of this atom is having a quote-unquote problem, and it would prefer to either completely fill this valence shell or to make it completely empty, in other words, to get rid of this. So how can uh, this hydrogen atom fix this problem? I basically just described what it can do. It can either acquire an electron and put it in this uh, slot here and have a, a completely filled first shell, or it could actually get rid of this electron here. And in the case of hydrogen, it depends on the situation as to whether it will fill that empty slot or get rid of this extra electron. Um, so with hydrogen, you'll, you'll see later in the course, it, it can do one or the other depending on the situation. But we'll talk about that more later. So I'm going to give you a few more examples now. So next atom and next question. Um, here we have a different atom. It has two protons, two neutrons and two electrons. And I'm going to ask you essentially the same questions and try to pause at the same times. So what type of atom is this? And again, I'll pause. You can look up the information in the periodic table. Um, and this is a helium atom. It's a helium atom because it has two protons, and every helium atom has only two protons. Next question, how many valence electrons does it have? You can pause again. And if you remember, valence electrons are the electrons in the outermost shell. This atom only has a single shell. So its only shell is its outermost shell. And it has two electrons in the outermost shell, so you would say it has two valence electrons. Next question. Is the valence shell filled? So again, I can pause. you can pause if you'd like. Um, and the answer is yes. The first shell can only hold two electrons. That's the maximum. And it has two electrons there. So the valence shell is filled. Next question, and you can pause at the end of this question as well. How can it fix this problem? So you can pause if you'd like. And this was a trick question. You can think of this atom as not having a problem at all. This helium atom has its valence shell filled, so it doesn't need to steal any electrons or get rid of any electrons. This is pr pretty much how a helium atom prefers to be with two electrons that it already has. So there's the second atom. There's a third atom coming up. Here's our atom, and this one is a little more complicated. It has four, eight, nine protons. It has four, eight, ten neutrons. So nine protons, ten neutrons, and a lot of electrons. It has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine electrons total. And I'm going to ask the same questions again, and you can pause uh, whenever you'd like. So what type of atom is this? You can pause if you like, 
And the way you figure out what type of atom it is, is you count the number of protons that it has, and it has nine. You look up nine on the periodic table, and you will see that this is a fluorine atom. So the abbreviation or the symbol is the letter F. Um, next question. How many valence electrons does it have? Again, you can pause and try to answer this question. This one might be a little tricky. So the valence, the number of valence electrons that it has is the number of electrons in the outermost shell. Here, we do not count the two electrons that are sitting in the first shell because they are not valence electrons. The number of valence electrons th that this fluorine atom has is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So that atom has seven valence electrons. Next question, is the valence shell filled? Hopefully you can see that the valence shell is not filled because the second shell can hold a maximum of eight and so there is one empty slot. Next question, how can it fix the problem that it has? So you can think of fluorine as not preferring to be like this. Fluorine does not prefer to have seven valence electrons in its second shell. So there are one of two things that it can do. It can either get rid of the seven electrons that are sitting in its outermost shell, or it can acquire or steal one electron to fill in that, that outermost shell, the second shell. And as a rule, it's, you can think of it as being easier for fluorine to steal one electron than it is for fluorine to give away seven electrons. And that's pretty much what fluorine does. Fluorine will steal or acquire an extra electron to fill it in its outermost shell. So let's give uh, this fluorine atom the extra electron that it acquires. So now I've filled in that empty spot. And you can think of this fluorine atom now with a completely filled second shell as being in uh, a preferred state. This is the way that fluorine atoms like to be. So if fluorine atoms like to be this way, I, I want to ask uh, another question that isn't written on this slide. What's the charge of this fluorine atom in, in the state that it likes to be? Well, the way to figure out the charge of an atom is you count up the number of protons and you subtract away the number of electrons. So we said that this fluorine atom has nine protons, and there are the nine, but it doesn't have nine electrons anymore. We started with nine, but it stole an extra one. So this atom now has 10 electrons. And if it has 10 electrons, it, those electrons each give a charge of minus one. Each proton gives a charge of plus one. So the answer to what's the charge of this entire atom, the answer is nine positive charges, and you subtract away these 10 because they're negative. So nine subtracting away 10 turns out to be negative one. So the charge of this fluorine atom in the state that it prefers to be is minus one. And so this is something that is sometimes a little bit difficult for beginning chemistry students to understand. They think that every single atom in the universe prefers to be electrically neutral. But that's not really true. A, a lot of atoms uh, very often frequently prefer to have a certain electrical charge. In the case of fluorine, if you follow these rules that we've just discussed, you can figure out that fluorine prefers to have an electrical charge of negative one because it prefers to have its second shell completely filled with electrons. And so fluorine prefers to have a charge of negative one, and fluorine prefers to be an anion. So I'm just using the, the term that we had discussed a few slides back. Anion means an atom or a group of atoms that has a negative electrical charge. So there you have it. This is, this is a more complicated atom, but you can basically uh, use the rules that we discussed and, and ask and answer these questions, and you can figure out the charge, the preferred electrical charge of many different atoms, including the fluorine atom. So you can ask, why is this important? Why is it important to, to know these rules and, and sort of understand that certain atoms prefer to have certain electrical charges? Uh, the first reason is that it's important to understand other parts of the course. So it, it's important to get this information under your belt. And the other reason is that it turns out that if you can sort of follow these rules and figure out what the preferred electrical charges are of different atoms, it actually helps to explain how different atoms attach to each other and how certain molecules are formed. And we're going to discuss that in great length in the next unit, but it's good to have this under your belt now. So again, I'm going to ask you a series of questions and try to work through these 
the answers to those questions. And again, you can pause uh, whenever you feel it's appropriate. So the first question is, how many valence electrons in a neutrally charged helium atom? So you can pause now, and I will go over the solution in a second. So the, the way to deal with this is to first draw uh, what amounts to a helium atom. So let's draw, uh, there are two protons horribly drawn because helium has two protons. And if the, if the helium atom is neutrally charged, that means that in addition to these two positive charges, you have to have two negative charges. And I won't switch colors because that's too sophisticated for me. Um, but there's electron number one, and there's electron number two. And the first shell can hold both electrons. So there is our first shell. So this is a very ugly looking helium atom. It has two protons and it has two electrons and it's neutral because these both have positive charges and these electrons both have negative charges. And the question is how many valence electrons does it have? Well, the valence electrons are the electrons in the outermost shell and this is the only shell, the first shell, so the number of valence electrons is two. This one here and this one here. The next question is how many valence electrons in a neutrally charged hydrogen atom? And again, hopefully this is relatively straightforward. Hydrogen has one proton, so there is our single proton. And if it's neutrally charged, it has to have one electron as well. So there's our electron. That electron fits in the first shell. And that looks a little bit nicer. So there's our neutrally charged hydrogen atom. And the question is, how many how many valence electrons does it have? Well, it has one. It only has one electron, and it has one valence electron. So again, that one was not too difficult. Third atom, third question. How many valence electrons in a neutrally charged oxygen atom? You can pause here and try to figure this out on your own, or I will go through this in a second. And this one is a little bit more difficult. If you look up how many protons oxygen has, oxygen has eight. So let's spend a little time drawing eight protons. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So there are our eight protons sitting in the center of the, nu uh, the nucleus. Let me try to actually get blue for electrons in this case. And this is neutrally charged oxygen. So if, if oxygen has eight protons or eight positive charges and it's neutrally charged, it has to have eight electrons as well. So how many electrons can fit in the first shell? Well, we said that there are two that can fit in the first shell. So let's put two in there. There's one. There's another. And but we just said that we need to add a total of eight electrons. We can only put two in the first shell, so we have to put another six in the second shell. So there's our second shell. There's one electron, two, three, four, five, and six. So here's our electrically neutral oxygen atom. It's oxygen because it has eight protons. It's neutral because it has a total of eight electrons, two in the first shell, six in the outermost shell. So the question here is, how many valence electrons does it have? And the answer to this is six, because uh, with valence electrons, you only count the electrons in the outermost shell. So sometimes uh, beginning students are tempted to say that this thing has eight valence electrons. But what they're doing by mistake is they're counting the number of electrons in the first shell. And you only count the ones in the outermost shell. So the valence electrons in neutral oxygen are six. And that's the end of this discussion. So as a summary of electrons, what I want you to know is I want you to know that the electrons in an atom can have different energy levels that are basically based on shells. So these levels are based on the shell that the electron is in. I do want you to know that the, the concept of a shell is an oversimplification, but it's good enough for our purposes. I want you to know how many electrons each shell can hold. So the first shell can hold two electrons, the second shell can hold eight, and the third shell can also hold eight. Know how the electron shells are actually filled up. In other words, you fill up the first shell first. Once you've filled up those two slots, then you start to fill in the second shell. Once you've filled in the second shell, then you fill in the third shell. And I want you to know the, the preferences that atoms have with respect to how many electrons they have. 
In other words, uh, I want you to remember that atoms prefer to either have their outermost shell completely filled or completely empty. And that's uh, the end of the introduction to electrons. We're going to discuss a little bit more about electrons in the next section, but that will be a relatively short discussion.